What is up guys? Welcome back to yet another Dragon Blaze video. I hope everybody's doing well today. We're gonna accomplish our Dragon Blaze dreams to get things done because that's why we're here. Uh, I keep missing the events. Sorry about that. Um, Kyle Dunn, uh, Hunt Vince here. I was so long events over. Nightmare is here. Make sure you have a powerful team for this because it's actually quite challenging. And then we have the Star Mobile uh, event, which is one that I normally don't really do very often. But yeah, those are interesting events. Um, I got to start bringing the patch notes again back to you guys. Not too much has been going on uh, as far as since the new hero has been out. But today is going to be about Cat's team right here. All three of these guys. So we're going to be doing a video about them today. And then we're going to start off by doing cat arenas so we can definitely just go to um her um her thing and talk about her once i find her so yeah so we're gonna start off here because these guys are awesome i mean she has specialized content for so many different things i mean look at this this is all her content or she specializes in she's nothing but guild boss bosses helping out destroying them allow you to do a lot of good damage she does so many cool things even even when she's in her uh other forms she's still very very strong so what we're gonna do is we're talking about we're gonna talk about her today and it says type inflicts 2500 percent skill damage on all enemies cool down 25.4 seconds let's see why it's especially one says increase nit by 120%, additional boss damage by 240%, and magic attack by 480% for all allies, seventh phase, five stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. So that's pretty cool, actually. She allows you to get additional damage and magic damage for all your allies, and it will not be removed. Only for Cerberus, though, so keep that in mind. Um, that's still very, very helpful, in my opinion, because a lot of people still struggle probably fighting those bosses, especially if you're new. So Cat should definitely help you out with that. Especially too, it says increase received magic damage by 100%, received range damage by 100%, and received and received damage uh, by 100% for all allies, seventh phase, five stacks, which is quite great. So you have your damage, every you received damage, all that good stuff, 100%, which is quite powerful. Um, she does a lot of work, guys. If you haven't used Katarina very much through like your stories or through your bosses or anything like that. Uh, you definitely need to, no matter if she's first, second, or third. She she is extremely helpful. And then we have specialty, th specialty three, cast Forbidden Horoscope effect on all allies, seventh phase, for 22.3 seconds when that be re removed by Cerberus. What is that? It says, the first one at the bottom says, increase additional boss damage by 360%, which is meaningful. Yeah, the percentages are not like super high, but you know, they have to kind of make sure that the game's not broken, you know, they're not balanced, they're not overpowered because they don't really nerf uh, heroes on this game as much as they should. So you don't want them to get too overly broken. And then the effect two says, when attacking the previous target again, uh, increases the damage inflicted by 360%, which is nice. So as you're constantly hitting that same um, target, which is gonna be the same one because Cerberus is only one boss, uh, it's going to inflict more. So that's why she hurts so much when it comes to this aspect. Uh, it does really, really, really good damage. Uh, secondly, it says Goddess Guide. It says um, type. It says inflict 2,800% skill damage on all enemies. Cool down 28.1 seconds. Let's see why. Specialty 1, it says increase additional boss damage by 400% for all allies. Seventh phase, five stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. So... So basically it does about 2,000 percentage somewhere around there because it's going to stack five times if it, I believe it works that way. And Cerberus can't remove it, so that's pretty good. Um, you're going to need that. And that's for everybody, so keep that in mind. That's going to hurt a lot. She's going to increase her percentage count so much when it comes to damage and everything else. Uh, it's quite outstanding, actually. Um, somebody a long time ago told me to use Katarina, and I didn't before. I have ever since then. Definitely helps. Um, cast 2... Um, Cast two, cast goddess. Well, especially two. Cast um, cast and goddess guide effect on all enemy seventh phase for five stacks. The first effect at the bottom says increase received magic damage by one hundred and eighty percent. The effect two says increase received range damage by the same percentage. So, 
your mages and stuff like that are sometimes far back. You do have some mages that kind of get in and do physical damage as well. But while your team's kind of hiding in the back line, you're still able to do that good range damage and still able to do that good magic damage, which is very meaningful. You kind of want to have them out of the way so they're not getting hit so much. Um, very, very, very important, in my opinion. And then her signature uh, says, uh, signature skill, upon charge of 100% signature energy, specialty one, it says inflicts 16,800% skill damage on all enemies, which is quite a bit. That's a lot. And specialty two, it says increased NIT by 1,080% and magical attack by uh, 4,320% and range attack by the same percentage I just mentioned, and additional boss damage by 2,160% 2, for all allies, seventh phase, five stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. Um, she's gonna hit like a truck for you and your team together when she does her, ult when she does her ultimate, basically, her signature skill. She's gonna hit pretty hard, actually. So I want you to keep that in mind. And it has, um, and then it has especially through cast dark will affect on all enemies, seventh phase for 36 seconds. But yeah, um, we're gonna get to that in a second. But yes, her ultimate is pretty, pretty bonkers actually. And at the bottom it says effect one, it says remove all buffs from all enemies. That's very important. So if they have any kind of agility or vulnerability or anything of that nature, health gains, buff attacks, range, anything of that nature, whatever buff they have, it's gone. Unless it cannot be removed, which I don't think we came across that yet. But yes, that's pretty meaningful. And then it says, effect two, it says, increase received magic damage by 600%. So that's pretty meaningful. Let's go to the passives. It's a specialty, uh, type one specialty skill. Cool down 30.1 seconds. Jeez, let's see why. Specialty one, it says, incre uh, inflicts 2,900 skill damage on all enemies. Specialty two, increase NIT by 200%, magic attack by 800%, and additional boss damage by 400%, and ranged attack by 800% for all allies, seventh phase, five stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. Again, very meaningful. Uh, just absurd buffs and making sure you're getting the job done. That's kind of silly, and obviously you want to have a bunch of mages around her too, but you know, some physical damage deals wouldn't hurt as well. But definitely kind of outstanding. Only for your bosses though. Only for the Cerberus and stuff. Uh, type two says conditional special skill cooldown 90.4 seconds. Jeez. A condition upon entering the battlefield or when you don't have an over otherworld being uh, a specialty um, summons an, an overworld being for 150 seconds. So I'm guessing that's whenever she does like her attack and then it summons them in. Uh, I'm not too sure because I haven't been paying too much attention to this ability. But I'm going to have to pay more attention to that so I can have a better understanding. But that sounds a bit powerful because, you know, when she first starts, she does her first attack and then she summons her ally in. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. But I'll have to look further, further more into that and get you more about on that, guys. Wow, this is a lot here. It says passive, personal passive. It says increase. <laughs> this is galactic orbit. Um, personal passive, increase skill attack by 3,600%. Additional boss damage by 1800%, NIT by 960%, ally or increase in main stats by um, 180%, magic attack by 720%, range attack by the same percentage, and additional boss damage by 336%. That's one. Um, wow, this is a lot. Um, it says ally mage and canter aura effect. It says increase NIT by 30%, range attack by 120%, enemy aura. Increase received magic damage by 75 and received range damage by 75. So basically just buffs back and forth, kind of help you out doing more damage is basically what that's about. Allowing you to basically go above and beyond because that's what Kyrie wants to do. I mean, she's extremely powerful for that music, for that reason. And then we have specialty one. It says uh, a paranormal attack inflicts 62, 6,250% and additional skill damage on one enemy which is pretty powerful. So obviously when she uses her skills, it does more damage there. Um, especially to upon using normal attack, inflicts three times additional skill damage on one enemy, only for bosses, as we knew it, because that's really broken when a hero has that kind of effect. Uh, it allows you to just hit extremely hard, not much you can really do about it. Especially three, 
uh, suppressor T3, when you attack an enemy, inflicts 2,500% additional skill damage on all enemies. Always get to have AOE. And specialty four, uh, when you attack uh, enemies, inflict 7,500% skill damage and additional skill damage on all enemies only for bosses. So that's not bad. Yeah, Katarina has a lot of stuff. It's taking mostly time just talking about her. That's silly. Uh, Nemesis. So this is officer for your world bosses. It says personal passive increased ranged attack by 3,000%, additional boss damage by 1,500%, NIT by 800%, and attack speed by 15 so that's pretty good. Again, this is all for your bosses. So obviously when you go in and play with Katarina, you're going to see all the effects on why she's so powerful. But man, uh, breaking her down is pretty silly. It says ally aura increased main stats by 300%, match attack by uh, 1200%, additional boss damage by 600%, and ranged attack by 1200%. Um, let's see. We have our... Yeah, so we have ally... Um, Ally Mage and Cantor, uh, Cantor Aura increase NIT by 90%, Magic Attack by 360%, additional boss damage by 180%, and skill attack by 360%. So these are all just like your percentage increases and stuff like that, which is going to be very helpful. And this is not even the good stuff yet. This is about to get ridiculous. It says here it says Ally Aura increase receive range damage by 600% and receive magic damage by the same percentage. And then we have Specialty, Specialty 1. Inflicts 31,250% additional skill damage on one on one enemy upon a normal attack. Zodiac sign. That's so powerful, guys, for just Katarina alone. Keep in mind, I don't think nobody does more damage than that in the game so far. So I just want to kind of put that uh, point that out there. Uh, Specialty 2 says inflicts 12,500% uh, additional skill damage on all enemies, which is really, really high for everyone. So again, she's going to hit like a truck whenever she's uh, in her bosses and if they have any minions or anything, but that's just insane. All enemies. So that's that, that's everywhere. It doesn't matter where it is. Wow. That's, that, that's quite stupid, actually. Special 3, upon using Goddess Guide skill, uh, increase received magic damage by 400% and received damage by 400% for all allies. 7th phase, 5 stacks, so it's going to get even stronger. We talked about that already. And especially 4, upon using Dark uh, dark skill, uh, increase magic attack by 2,880%, uh, additional boss damage by 1,440%, range attack by 2,880%, 2, and main stats by 720% for all allies, seventh phase, five stocks would not be removed by Cerberus. So just nothing but good stuff there, just allowing you to get stronger and no buffs can be removed, which is great because they do remove buffs all the time, especially Cerberus, that's how you get so much stronger and deal so much damage to you. So perfect that they can't take it away. In Specialty 5, it says, um, upon using, was that Forbidden Horoscope skill, uh, increase additional boss damage by 480% and magical attack by 960% for all allies. Seventh phase 5 stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. So, that's quite powerful. Then we have our Celestial Orb. So, yeah. So, definitely, her passives are very, very strong. All her abilities are very, very strong. And then it just, it doesn't end. It just gets even better because this is her Infinity Passive. Personal Passive. Uh... It says, uh, increase skill attack by 165% and NIT by 47, which is okay. Ally or increase additional boss damage by 44. Specialty 1, upon using the Forbidden Horror Sub skill, increase receive magic damage by 100%, receive damage by the same percentage, and receive damage by 100% for all allies, 7th phase, 5 stacks, so that'd be 500. Uh, specialty 2, upon using the Ancient Angel Will skill, uh, increase NIT by 160% and magic attack by 640% for all allies. 7th phase, 5 stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. And then the bottom down here, it says increase ally or, um, ally or increase NIT by 26, additional boss damage by 62. And then specialty inflicts 12,500 additional skill damage. Sorry if I kind of some of the over my words there. I got to slow down for talking so fast and kind of do this better for you guys. But just that alone was 15 minutes just on her. Um, Kat's pretty powerful. Uh, there, there's no doubt that um, she is not weak in any way. Uh, she's uh, absurdly strong, actually, for her own good. 
And that's the reason why it takes a lot of time to get her so strong and get her built up so high. Uh, everything about her is just it's just so meaningful. It's not even funny. And then we're going to go here. So we're going to talk about these guys. These shouldn't take that long. So we're going to go to our friend here. It says ways of knowledge. It says um, type. Uh, so it says type deals 3,500% skill damage five times to a random enemy, which is pretty awesome, actually. Just anybody do that kind of damage five times. That's not that's not bad, actually. And then the cooldown is 22.5 seconds. I see why, because we're going to go down to the specialty. It says specialty uh, one. It says increase your NIT by 110%, magic attack by 440%, and critical damage by 110%, seventh phase, five stacks. So that's meaningful because whenever you have critical damage increased, it allows you to hit a lot harder. Cat didn't have that. So that's pretty cool that her buddy has it. And it, and it also increases it five times. That's also very meaningful. So make sure you understand that's your critical damage is the most damage you can do, like your highest cap, because it can kind of keep going up higher. So that's pretty awesome that she can crit. Uh, specialty two, it says, cast wave of knowledge on all allies, seventh phase for 20.3 seconds. Let's see what this is. The effect one says, increase NIT by 44%, magic attack by 176%, and additional, an additional uh, increase them by 15 per knowledge. So I have to look at that uh, better. So their knowledge is uh, higher and they get a higher percentage. So I have to look more into that to give you a better understanding on that one. Um, and then the second effect says increase a single attack by one, 176% and skill attack by the same percentage and additional and additionally increase them by 15 per knowledge. So I have to see what that means actually when it comes to that because I'm not used to ever seeing that. So I'm not gonna have to do my research and figure out what that is or ask my buddies about that one. It says dimensional rift. It says type, it says inflicts. Um, 6,250% skill damage on one enemy. Cooldown 28.3 seconds, I see why. Specialty one, it says inflicts 2,400% additional skill damage on random on damage on nearby enemies. So who's ever near her, they're gonna receive that, which is kinda nice if she's in the middle, everybody's gonna receive it. It's kinda in front of her, they're gonna receive it, who's in front of her, behind her, stuff like that, so, cause they're nearby. So that's pretty good. And it says, especially to uh, cast a dimensional rift effect on all allies, seventh phase for 24 point seconds. At the bottom, the first effect says, Increase magic attack by 264%, skill attack by 264%, and critical damage by 66%, and additionally increase by 15% and 15 per knowledge. So that's pretty good. I hope they explain more about that because I got to see what that means. I don't really haven't broke this down yet. So that knowledge, I got to check that out for sure. Ritual of Pact, it says inflicts uh, 6,500 uh, skill damage on one enemy, cooldown 24.8 seconds, let's see why. Specialty 1, it says inflicts 2,700% additional skill damage on on a random enemy five times. So when they have effects like that, that is so meaningful because you have a higher chance of knocking them out and doing so much damage, and she crits. So that makes it even better that um, that she can do that. That's That's so meaningful. Special two is cast ritual of pact on all on all enemies seventh phase for five stacks, increase receive uh, increase receive single damage by 94 percent and receive magic damage by the same percentage. That's pretty awesome actually. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's very meaningful being able to do that effect on all enemies. You, you're gonna like it whenever she does a lot of damage depending on how strong she is. Uh, I've seen her put in so much work. Um, secondly, it says, uh, Katarina's wish, it says, personal passive increased NIT by 320% and magic attack by 3,600% and additional boss damage by 600%, which is quite meaningful. Ally Aura, increased magic attack by 1,080%, skill attack by the same percentage, additional boss damage by, four, by 540%, and single attack by the, the same percentage I just mentioned earlier. Ally Mage, it says, um... A canter aura increase skill attack by 300% and magic attack by 300%. So this is basically like for like for your separate schools, your classes basically. So you 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 know your mage is gonna get that. Your your canter will get the ones I mentioned here. So not to get that confused, they have their own ally auras whenever they're together. So 
switch to one, it says inflicts 4,000 additional skill damage on one enemy upon normal attack. Switch to two, it says inflicts three times additional skill damage on one enemy upon normal attacks only for bosses. So that's not bad. It was multi-dimensional knowledge. So here we go. This is what I was wondering. It says special skill. It says specialty one. Knowledge by two every three seconds. Max 60. So every two seconds it's going to go up. So the other abilities before that I was wondering, she makes it even stronger for everybody, including herself. So that's pretty awesome, actually. I was, I was wondering about that. Happy that they clarified it here for us. Especially too, all skills are available regardless of the cooldown upon entering the battlefield. So that's kind of neat. No matter what, those skills are going to pop off. That's pretty awesome. And then we have Lunar Coin. Holy moly. Uh, this is for your 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 uh, your world bosses, basically. Personal passive increased NIT by 800%. Critical damage by 400%. Additional boss damage by 2,250%. Not bad. Personal passive 2. Increased magic attack by 3,750%. And attack speed by 15%. Ally Aura. Uh, increased NIT by 210%. Magic attack by 1,680%. Skill attack by 840%. Signal attack by the same percentage I just mentioned. And additional boss damage by 420 um, let's see here. Enemy aura increase, uh, receive magic damage by 150% and receive magic damage. No, hold on. Increase, receive single damage by 150% and then the magic damage by the same percentage. Sorry. Uh, ally mage aura and canter increase NIT by 150 in additional. Did I just read that? No, no, I didn't. Um, 50 in the magic type by 600, skill type by 600, additional boss damage by 300%. Sorry about that. There's a lot here on the screen. I'm trying to make sure I didn't go out of order. If I did, I do apologize. Specialty 1. It says, uh, inflicts 24,000% skill damage and additional skill damage on one enemy upon normal attacks, which is quite powerful. Again, they do lots of damage, especially doing like just your normal hits. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Specialty 2 says, increased inflicts times two additional skill damage on one enemy upon normal attack only for bosses. Specialty 3 says inflicts 40,000% additional skill damage on one enemy, which is just absurdly high. I mean, just for no reason. That's, that's pretty broken, but that's okay because you know these, these are additional characters on a whole different set of uh, content. So, um, Specialty 4 says inflicts 32,000 percent additional skill damage on nearby enemies <laughs> that's so much like she does so much damage usually she gets taken out first whenever you're doing Kyrie in a story when you're fighting her bosses and stuff like that because she just wrecks too hard actually um especially five upon using the ritual of pack skill increase nit by 188 percent additional boss damage by 376 percent match attack by 752 percent and skill attack by the same percentage for all allies seventh phase five stacks so that's very meaningful so she's going to power up all of your team uh physical magic all that stuff and they have all kind of ally auras they're definitely going to be doing a max amount of damage so make sure you keep in tone of what you're doing with these guys because they hurt and they hit very hard especially six upon using wave of knowledge skill increase additional boss damage by 320 percent and magic attack by 640 percent for all allies seventh phase five stacks see there you go Keeping that magic team together and doing so much damage. Specialty 7, upon using Dimensional Rip skill, increase additional boss damage by 360%, and NIT by 180%, skill type by 720, and critical damage by 180% for all allies, 7th phase, 5 stacks. That's critical. Everybody else get their critical, guys. That is so important because you want to do as much damage as possible. So that's that's perfect. I'm happy that she does that for your team. Unseen the future. Um, Affinity passive, personal passive, increased, ma increased magic attack by 165% NIT by 55. Uh, ally or increased skill attack by 76%. Specialty 1, upon using waves of knowledge, increased magic attack by 176% for all allies, 7th phase, 5 stacks. So she already does that. Specialty 2, upon using dimensional rift, increased skill attack by 240% for all allies, 7th phase, 5 stacks. There you go. So again, all about just buffing your team just nothing but a big buffer it does so much good damage guys it's, it's kind of crazy to be honest and then your type 2 
This is for your gen, so your personal passive increased magic attack by 263%. Ally Aura increased skill attack by 123%. Specialty 1 inflicts 12,000 additional skill damage on one enemy. Specialty 2 inflicts 8,100% additional skill damage on nearby enemies. So, yeah. Um, they hurt. They're 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 very powerful guys i mean oh my god this is it's just it's insane and then we're gonna get to her which should be the last one well wow, they have a lot actually um so what it says dragon's breath it says uh inflicts uh five thousand uh, percent skill damage on one enemy uh, cooldown 19.9 seconds. Let's see why specialty one. It says inflicts 3,264 percent additional skill damage on all enemies, which is quite great. Specialty two it says increased physical attack by 98 percent and additional random damage by 49 percent for all allies. Seventh phase five stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. So random damage is definitely just random damage. It can be very helpful. Demonic wrath. It says inflicts um, 1,620 percent skill damage on one enemy. Cooldown 24.8 seconds. I see why, especially one. It says inflicts 3,468 percent skill damage on all enemies, which is nice. We have AOE built in, which is good. Especially two. It says increased additional boss damage by 57 percent and DEX by 29 percent for all allies. Seventh phase five stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. So that's good because your archers and your rogues and stuff benefit from this. So that's pretty powerful right there. Finishing move. Um, says uh, type it says inflicts 6630 percent skill damage on one enemy cooldown 28.5 seconds i see why specialty one it says inflicts 3672 percent additional skill damage on all allies so more aoe physical far range so doing some physical damage and stuff here which is great Specialty two it says increased physical damage by 131 percent and ranged attack by the same percentage for all allies seventh phase five stacks will not be removed by cerberus so you want physical people around her your heroes or over the crimson lava we're going to go through this kind of quick these are just like your standard you can always go back through and look for yourself but i'm already pushing time i read i didn't want this video to be this long so we're going to try to kind of fly through this one special skill it says condition upon entering the battlefield we love those specialty one restores or of crimson lava by 100 for this character we're going to see what that is specialty two consumes one aura of crimson lava every two seconds Specialty 3, entering the battlefield with all skills ready to use regardless of the cooldown. See, I love stuff like that. I wish they had more of that for other heroes because that is so useful. I love that very much because sometimes they have like a slight delay sometimes. And especially if you already fought before and you've killed so many enemies and your cooldown hasn't reset yet. That can affect you. So I'm so happy that they have something like that. Um... And then uh, Aura of Crimson Lava Effect upon normal attack, we're at the bottom. Increase your DEX by 132%. Increases, and increases additional by 30 for each Aura of Crimson Lava. Seventh phase for 3.2 seconds when I be removed by Cerberus. So hopefully they explain uh, more about that because we need to know for sure. And then we have your Dragon Blood. So it says type 1 personal passive. Personal passive increased DEX by... 163% and physical attack by 612% and additional random damage by 306%, which is quite nice. Ally Aura, increased AoE attack by 245%. That's very meaningful because a lot of our, our allies do AoE. So when they get stronger, that's helpful for us. Um, gotta love that. Specialty 1, inflicts 12,240% additional skill damage on one enemy upon normal attack only for bosses. So we've seen that several times already. Touch to two inflicts 6,120 percent additional skill damage on all enemies upon normal attacks. Again, only for bosses, and that's fine. You know, we have to keep it kind of balanced too. Type two Cerberus Hydra passive is especially to one. It says inflicts 19,380 percent additional skill damage on one enemy upon normal attacks. Especially to two, it says inflicts 10,200 uh, percent additional skill damage on all enemies upon normal attacks. So there we go. That's what we need. That's what we're looking for. Specialty 3, upon using Dragon's Breath skill, increase additional boss damage by 490% for all allies. Seventh phase, five stacks would not be removed by Cerberus. Specialty 4, upon using the Demonic Wrath skill, increase additional boss damage by 490% for all allies. Seventh phase, five stacks would not be removed by Cerberus. 
Special to 5, upon using finishing move skill, increase additional boss damage by 490% for all allies. 7th phase, 5 stacks will not be removed by Cerberus. So all these things is allowing you to get stronger, increases your buffs no matter what. If you have her as your summon, and then you're going to get stronger no matter what, and you cannot do jack about it. You're going to be using these skills constantly, so they're going to constantly stack and allow you to get stronger, especially for your ally auras too. So make sure you have the correct team set up for these, because you're going to need that. And then we have Magma Crystal. It says uh, per Cerberus passive, personal passive, uh, unaffected by uh, Cerberus's instant death skill against summons. That's very important. So when he tries to 1KO, not going to work. Not going to work. Not today, we're not. That's very, very impactful. Just want to let you know that. that. That means the world that he can't do that. Personal passive 2 says increases DEX by 326% and physical attack by 100, by 1,224%. Additional random skill damage by 612% and additional boss damage by the same percentage. Specialty 1, it says inflicts 29,580% additional skill damage upon one, uh, one enemy upon normal attack, which is great. Specialty 2 inflicts 10 times additional skill damage on one enemy upon normal attack. 10 times, guys, on one enemy. That can instantly knock out somebody. That's kind of broken, actually. Whoa. Um, type 2, Hydra Passive, uh, Ally Aura, increased physical attack by 428%. Skill attack by the same percentage, AOE attack by the same percentage, and additional boss damage by 214. Archer Aura, increased AOE attack by 420%, 28%, and range attack by the same percentage I just mentioned. Specialty, uh, specialty says it flicks 14,280% additional skill damage on all enemies upon normal attack. That's, that's pretty nice. And obviously, we skip those because it's not really too important because this is where mine is. Uh, it says Ascending Dragon, it says Affinity Passive, Personal Passive, Increased Range Attack by 165%, Physical Attack by 489%, and Additional Boss Damage by 110%. That will grow as it levels, as so with the rest, they all will grow and get stronger when it comes to their Affinity Passive, because it's only on Stage 5 for here, just know that. Hydra and Cerberus Passive, second one, Personal Passive, it says Increased Range Attack by 263%, and Physical Attack by 308%. Specialty 1, upon using, upon attacking an enemy, inflicts 10,200% additional skill damage on a single, skill damage on a single, on a single damage. That's kind of unusual. Why would you have that? I'm not sure if it's worded that way for a reason, but that's a little weird. Specialty 2, upon attacking an enemy, inflicts 4,080% additional skill damage on nearby enemies. So, um, their whole crew as a whole... They're powerful. All of them are very unique in a certain way. Oops, didn't mean to do that. All of them are unique in a certain way. Um, every one of them are so broken and so powerful. They power up all your teams, depending on what classes you want, ally ors and canters for it. It's just, they all power up specific teams. So you definitely want to have a great lineup for them. I didn't want this video to be that long, but it was very long. Sorry if I stumble over my words and stuff like that. I have to kind of fix that and slow down for talking so fast, but they're all awesome. And obviously, you know, um, I've powered up my team quite a bit. I set to power them up some more. Um, I've got a couple that are already maxed out. I'm working on everybody. It does require you to have star essences, so be careful. You know, I, I'm saving mine now because I want to restore. Uh, I want to restore her stories. I still have to. So I have to save up on doing that. But keep in mind, these guys are all powerful. And make sure you invest your time and stuff to them whenever you can. Uh, for the proper materials that you need but anyways guys that is the video for today uh, it's a very very long one sorry about that so hopefully you enjoy it and we will see you for the next one